What's up guys and gals, it's the Tyrant here, and today I'm going to show you how to skip the final mission in Halo 5 Guardians. These tactics can be used on any difficulty setting, easy through legendary, and even all the way up to mythic and lazo. If you would like to see me perform these tricks on mythic or lazo difficulty, don't forget to swing by and check out my Halo 5 Guardians mythic difficulty walkthrough. You'll notice in this first room that there are quite a few weapons for you to choose from, including light rifles and carbines. However, I would recommend sticking with your base weapons, the battle rifle, and the magnum. Now, unfortunately, this room is timed, so you can't really skip past it before the game wants you to. But, as soon as Exuberant Witness says, right this way. you can proceed to the next area. Look at all of them. How are we gonna stop that? This next area is also scripted. However, once the gondola reaches near the bottom, you can use its momentum to jump to the other side and speed along, shaving off a few seconds of your run. I have cured Rampancy. Not just for me, but for any who join my cause. While you've been running around the galaxy, I've been speaking to my created. And now the time has come to ask. In this first large area, you have two options. You can either go left or you can go right. Personally, I recommend taking out that initial Jackal Ranger and then heading to the left and hugging that left wall while sprinting to the other side of the room. The reason why I recommend you take this route is because you have more cover from the soldier snipers perched in the center platform in the middle of the area. Once you reach this point, jump over the heads of the soldier captains and proceed through the next door. Again, you're going to want to stick to the path on the left. Now, if you're playing this mission on Mythic or Lazo, you may have lost your shields in the previous area. You can use this opportunity to bash the Watcher that'll spawn right here to get your shields back. Climb up this rock formation and then sprint and jump between the focus cannons right at the center. Once you're here, you're going to want to run and dash to the door as quickly as possible, then immediately dash to your right and then back up so that you can avoid the focus turrets lasers. It'll take a couple of seconds for the door to open, but once it does, quickly head through and run to the left to give you plenty of cover from the focus turrets. Once the focus turrets have fired, you can proceed to the next area. Now, depending on what difficulty mode you're playing, this could determine what strategy you use for this next area. If you're playing on a lower difficulty like easy or normal, or you're trying to speed run, I would recommend first climbing this rock formation, grabbing the Vorpal Talon, then immediately dropping down and getting the Ghost. Don't worry, if a soldier manages to take it first, you can simply hijack the Ghost and then proceed to the left side of the map. If you're playing on a higher difficulty setting like Legendary, Mythic, or Lazo, my recommendation would be to take the Mantis first and destroy all Covenant and Prometheans in this area. Once you've managed to do so, then grab the Vorpal Talon, get back in the Mantis, and head towards the left side of the map, towards the other core. If you would prefer, you can get your allies to attack the core. Later on, this could provide a checkpoint for you. Regardless of which strategy you decide to use, the common factor here is the Vorpal Talon. Like any other energy sword, it gives you a 10% speed boost while you're sprinting. However, unlike other energy swords, it also allows you to stabilize twice as long and gives you two thrusts to use in a row. These abilities will be necessary to pull off the next major trick. Continuing forward, if you're using the Mantis, you'll want to take out all the Prometheans in the next area. This will always include one knight and several crawlers, although occasionally this will also include a pair of soldiers, though this is a rare occurrence. If you're using the Ghost, Go ahead and speed on through this entire area and pull your ghost around to this particular rock formation. This is where the final skip truly begins. And if you're able to perform it correctly, this will also allow you to skip the entire core sequence as well as the fight that takes place inside the Forerunner structure. Make sure you have the Vorpal Talon equipped, then sprint and boost into the rock formation. Your momentum should easily push you to the top of the rock formation where you can then turn, jump, and clamber to the ledge. It's also entirely possible to boost high enough that you don't even need to clamber. Either way works fine. And while it's entirely possible to utilize the ghost to pull off this trick, take it from me, it's much easier to do this on foot. Once you're in this position, you want to turn and face this direction. From here, you're going to want to sprint, jump, boost, stabilize, and then boost again to get you across the gap. Use clamor if necessary. You'll notice here that you are considered out of bounds and you'll see the clock ticking down. 
move forward slowly until the clock disappears. You might notice that you drop down a small ledge. Once you've waited for the clock to recharge, slowly back up till you're on top again and then jump and boost to the other side. One boost is all you need and this should get you behind the wall. If you landed properly, then you should be able to see this crease in the cartography. Slowly move up the right side until you're about eye level with this crease. Once here, slowly move forward and when you feel yourself falling to the left, use one boost to get through the wall. You want to avoid boosting twice because doing so could push you out of the map and you could fall to your death. It's also worth noting here that if you fall too far to the right, it'll push you back into the map itself and then you'll be subject to have to do the trick all over again. As for this next area right here, I'm not gonna lie. It's considered by many to be the toughest part of this trick and you'll probably have to practice it many times before you get it down. Seeing where you can go and where you can't can be a challenge, but once you learn it, it'll become second nature. First, you wanna look up to this exact location and slowly start moving forward. You wanna make sure you keep your eyes in this direction as well in order to break through the wall later. Take your time here and move slowly along the path. Once you get far enough, you will start feeling a slight pull to the left. You may need to crosswalk to get to the other side. Don't do this too aggressively, otherwise it'll pull you down. Once you do finally reach the wall, continue looking in this direction and slowly start to strafe left. Once you feel yourself start to fall, immediately boost twice to get through the wall. This will put you on top of the Forerunner structure. Once you're here, you'll want to hug the invisible wall to your left. Keep following until you cannot go any further. Once you're here, we're gonna have to figure out a way to get past the barrier. It's fairly simple. All you have to do is crouch and then move to the left. This will get you through the invisible barrier. You'll wanna keep strafing left until you reach this line. Once you do, slowly start to move forward. You'll notice a rock formation on your right. This rock formation is protecting you from the particle cannons on the other side. They can get you from here and on higher difficulties, they can take you down pretty easily. Once you're here, slowly strafe left until you drop down below the map. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to run, jump, boost, and then ground pound to this little ledge. Turn around and you should be facing a circular structure. This is where things start to get a little tricky. Again, run, jump, boost once, and then once the structure is almost out of the picture, stabilize. If you see the cinematic bars, you know you did it right. Once you're at this point, immediately start spamming the jump button while also holding right on the movement thumbstick. As soon as the scenery changes, quickly boost to the right twice, and then you're gonna climb up these rocks and jump to this small ledge. This is where things get really tricky. From here on out, you're gonna be relying solely on audio cues to get from point A to point B. This area is timed, so even if you're slightly off, you won't be able to get back into the map. Make sure you're facing the right side of the structure. And as soon as Locke says, Only one of us has to reach the relay to stop her. Immediately sprint, jump, and boost twice, and then stabilize. As soon as Locke says, We didn't come this far just to watch her leave. Charge up your ground pound. You're going to want to aim at this exact location just to the left of this small pylon. And as soon as Locke says, Exuberant. Release the ground pound, and this should get you back into the map and allow you to finish the mission normally. Again, this works on all difficulty settings from easy all the way up to legendary, mythic, and lazo, and I hope you're able to find this useful during your personal run. If you found these tips and tricks useful, I'll hope you consider leaving a like and subscribing for more content right here on mythictower.com. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below, or feel free to hit me up on Twitter, at Mythic Tyrant. Thank you so much for watching today's tips and tricks video. I hope you found it both useful and enjoyable. I'll catch you all right back here next time, and as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.